Hey guys, what's going on? It's uh, no, that just ignore that. Um, <laughs> it's World Once again. Uh, I've been pretty busy on my modded Minecraft world. Um, I looked a little too far to the right just now, and you probably saw that. Oh, and now I'm in water. So, uh, nope. <laughs> I've been a little too busy. I wanted to start doing update videos, but I, with how much I've done since last time, I clearly have it in not doing them often enough. Um, so, you can probably already tell by my hotbar and my inventory that a lot has changed. <laughs> Go away. Why are you guys spawning? Where's my magnum torch? It's right there. Why are you guys spawning? What? 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 What the fuck? Oh. That ain't right. Why are you guys spawning? Anyway, as you can see, a lot has changed. Um, I think I'm going to go with carpenter's blocks to light up my base. I've been putting those around here and there. Um, I don't believe I had an RF tool set up last time. I'm pretty sure I didn't ha get into Batania at all. Um, I know I didn't have Awakened Draconium stuff. Uh, I didn't have freaking a bajillion nether stars. Um, <laughs> where do I start? Uh, I think the very first thing I did since the last episode was set up another spawner for Wither Skulls. I believe that was the last thing I did. This might actually still be on, so... Okay, yeah, it's on. Um, so I set this whole thing up. I don't think I had this done last time. Basically, a transfer node grabs the items, throws them in this chest, which they get filtered. Uh, any items here, it's set to ignore metadata. So any of these items, it'll pull into my trash chest. Anything else goes in here. Um, I have it set up that I like so I can switch it between getting heads and just get that, yeah, or souls. I also have another one down here, specifically for tiny pigmen. Because some mod adds tiny pigmen, and this guy won't hit them. There's also blazes, um, and there's room for a third spawner, or fourth spawner, over there behind that wall. I left room for it right here um, I don't know what I'm gonna put in there if anything uh, these are all hooked up to receivers as you can see there's lovers at my base I'll show you those in a bit so basically I'm just using extra utilities conveyor belts which seem to be the best ones to move mobs around with and then it just pulls them over to this autonomous activator which is powered by a tesseract right there um, it has chargeable item filter set it'll pull this guy out when it's at zero percent output is set on the back it'll pull that out into here another chargeable item filter set for a hundred percent to put it back in uh, the XP hopper here each slot filled with a heat sand so it doesn't grab any items but it will grab XP uh, it's limited on how much EXP it can grab because it's transfer rate isn't all that great. But it's just a little bit of extra bonus XP. Um, which helps a little, I guess. So this is where I get my mass supply of Wither Skulls from. I'll show you all the other stuff in a bit. I'm just trying to do this in a more... Oh god in a more logical order. So I believe the next thing I did, uh, as you can see right up here, there's uh, some lovers. I can turn that off for now. You probably have plenty of skulls. Uh, I moved some stuff up here. Um, this is a tier seven energy core now. As you can see. Uh, I didn't know if I had enough room for it, but I just barely did. Um, which I knew at some point I would have room for it, so I wasn't too worried. Because this is, again, a temporary setup. This still hasn't been moved. I have added, uh, what's this? 
Oh no, that's that was there last time. Uh, sugarcane seeds. I don't remember if the uh, the botania seeds were not there last time. I'm almost certain. Um, I did cut this down so that it was only making triple compressed cobble, and I set my system so that it could make quadruple compressed. Um, oh, I've got to show you this point of view. This point of view from my base looks really awesome. I think it looks great. Um, the base has walls now, more or less. As you, you, can, you can see my other setups. Uh, that have a start to them. <clears throat> I have these nodes set up so that as soon as I make a silver wood wand, I can capture them and or not capture them, but move them. Really, they're just in the way. I need to do it to this node as well. Um, that obsidian platform's for awakened draconium, by the way, uh, the ritual of awakening or whatever. So here's my Ars Magica setup. I'm kind of going in reverse order. In fact, let's change that. Um, I'm moving on from topic to topic. The next thing I did, I think, was the Wither Grinder because I needed a shit ton of uh, Nether Stars to really get into Draconic Evolution. Um, so, Wither Grinder. I put it in the last millennium because I figured, you know, it's a void dimension. Uh, least amount of chunks loaded to keep it running. Um, I did a similar setup to Nebris here. Although, I think I found the video he was talking about, and I watched that. Um, this is set up to my receiver to invert itself. And then it's set up to a timer with a delay of 3 seconds. And then it's hooked up to this with a delay of 8 ticks. Uh, it'll go into here. It'll tell the soul sand to place first, and then the skulls to place on top of them. And these are just input chests from my system. Uh, it's the export... Um, buses I put on here won't fill up these chests completely. It'll just do a, about a stack and a half. And as you can see, these are all full. Um, I'll show you how I got tons of soul sand in a minute here, because Natura does make that a bit difficult. Um, one thing I need to change with this is the runic glass, the witherproof, because there's a glitch where every time he blows up, it destroys them, but it doesn't. And the transfer node picks it up before the system can be like, hey, this item shouldn't exist. Um, yeah, so just the usual setup for a wither grinder, um, except, uh, well, I guess that is the usual setup. I don't really know. Um, there's a few differences. Uh, I have a transfer node over here that puts the items in there. Uh, I don't, how am I powering this? In fact, I'm not powering it. Oh, shit. Oh yeah, that's right. I had a bit of a bug with this. <laughs> so I was trying to get infused XP uh, from my armor. So I made a little thing where I could just kind of sit here while this ran. Um, There's a little glass thing. I think I'd put it over here or something. And anyway, um, I didn't realize that that works off of damage taken instead of XP gained. So I just kind of sat there for a while. When I And then I realized that after browsing some forms and went there but never took that thing down. And next time I came back here, my whole system was broke um, and I guess they blew up the tesseract at one point so I'm gonna have to remember that and replace that um, uh, so this is set up oh god um, the explosion won't damage this vacuum hopper and this took me a while to figure out how to do this some trial and error and then that'll just cap grab some exp that'll grab the items I need to get a tesseract to put on top of that um, I'm glad I came out here to show this off because that was something I, yep. Uh, so I have to remember, I think south? Yeah, south. Okay, so this is, I think, the next thing I did. Um, because I was really low in draconium. This is my ore sheep grinder. Uh, I think right now in there it has a gold ore sheep, but I figured I need to make one of these at some point. Um, this one took some trial and error as well. I just used a normal invert cell on this one. It didn't seem like I thought it wasn't working, but it works fine. Whatever. So that, yeah. So when it's inverted so that when it's off, uh, so when the le basically so that the lever at base will tell me if the spawner is on or off is what I wanted. Um, I didn't put any runic glass here, so we can actually see inside here. Um, but that's something I want to be wary of. Apparently, my Kokoku here has taken damage. 
and I'm not sure how. Oh, you know what? Because that's the one I ripped an enchant off. That's right. I ripped an enchant off that one with the disenchanter at one point. Anyway, Tesseract powering those. They have uh, diamond pickaxes in them. Great. Just what I wanted. Um, I was going to use diamond spikes at one point. That was just a supplies chest where I brought all the supplies I needed for it. For it. Um, so that'll collect sewage. I don't plan to have any use for sewage, to be honest. But since they are sheep, they do generate uh, sewage. Um, any EXP, I think, uh, wait, no, mob essence goes into here. And this is just has, yeah, a Kokoku to kill them. Um, I figured some souls wouldn't hurt. It would help me make resurrection stones. Um, that's why there's a Kokoku with Reaper in there. Uh, generally, I'm using the Kokoku because it's, un it, it's unbreakable in most circumstances. Um, that's about it. Magnum torch to keep anything from spawning here. Uh, that's about it. It's pretty much face value. You can just kind of look at it and tell how it works. Try not to have it too complicated. Um, I haven't really made any such spawners in the end yet. Um, I don't plan to really do that until I get more into Thomcraft and I need Ender Shards more. Um, I figure, I guess I should show you my power system, my new power system. Um, I upgraded to a turbine, a lucidite turbine, in fact, no less. Um, it, it's this system, it only uses uh, 340, well, 34 hundredths of a millibucket per tick. Um, generates plenty of steam to keep this running at all times at 28 KRF. Uh, which generates more than enough power that more power than I need at the moment um, but my power needs will grow soon um, specifically because of RF dimensions because once I get more power gen I can make some pretty crazy dimensions uh, here's the spot I have laid out for another turbine because this can support two turbines it's at 60% all these fuel rods are at 60% right now because that's the lowest point I can go before it starts uh, not getting enough steam for the turbine. Um, so if I have this, if I have them all at 20%, I am assuming, if my math is correct, 10 or 20%, and it'll be able to support a second turbine. And then there I have a spot mapped out for another reactor and two more turbines. And for this area over here, I have auto processing planned. So export buses with various ores and processing so that my crafting system doesn't have to do it every time. So just stuff that basically I will never use its raw form uh, for anything. Um, and I am going to have to set up uh, some kind of system so that it only exports ores like agricraft type ores uh, if I have a stat over a stack of them. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that just yet. Um, I changed up this gear press because it was stopping up at some points, and I had to come down here and manually throw some gears on it or some ingots on it to get it going again. Um, I changed it up a bit. Um, the problem with this is if I have my ring of magnetism on, it is the ingots are an item for a moment on this conveyor belt before they get put into the gear press. Um, and during that time, it, I will pick them up, which is not fun. Um, I added more pulverizers, more furnaces. I had to switch these to round robin. Um, I added vacuum item ducts here, impulse, but I don't know if that helps at all. Um, I haven't messed with this one yet. I haven't put, or no, that is an impulse item duct. Never mind. Um, more over here. Two, I added a second alloy smelter. Actually, I don't know if that was there before, but yeah. Um, I don't know if this was here before either, but it's basically just an autonomous activator that places ores like draconium or yellow orium. And then this breaks them. Uh, this has the. This shouldn't be breakable at all, but for some reason the autonomous activator still manages to break it somehow. So I'll probably have to repair that at some point. I have methods to do so though without using up levels or to avoid the too expensive. Um, I added another set of 32 assemblers because I didn't have enough room. Uh, I made this set up here which is just a bunch of resonant caches hooked up to storage buses. Um, and basically, this is how I did this. Quartz fiber cables to keep it as compact as possible. 
and then these just connect into the dense cables. Uh, this isn't using all 32 channels because I believe there's two of these, this one and another one that I haven't designated a block for just yet. Um, there's another one over here that is all materials. Um, and I find I still have materials that I will, that I either do or will at some point have bulk of. So I need to at some point add another one. I think I'm gonna put those here and on the same side over there. Uh, I'm gonna do the same for a liquid storage because I actually have uh, I have life essence. I'll show you how I got that in a bit as well. Um, I'm gonna do liquid storage here and on the opposite side once I have that set up. Um, I need to add more crafting computers or rather stronger crafting computers. I'm not sure what it is, but I think my crafting computers, I, I, I don't know. There's some kind of problem with my ME system at the moment, the auto crafting specifically. Sometimes it'll get hung up on recipes. Like uh, it'll say, like for example, uh, just to make a simple example, if I told it to make, uh, so, I, so I have 9,000 quarried stone. So if I told it to make say 2,000 fitted quarried stone, uh, it would get hung up on the smelting of these, the quarried blocks at some point. Like it will stop inputting them into my furnace chest here. So they stop getting made, but its system still has it like queued up. What's over there? What is that? Oh yeah, oh, oh that's a simple little tree farm I set up because I was tired of running out for wood. Um, okay. Uh, I did get into Batania. That's that temporary setup is gone though. It was in this area, but it got pushed back. Um, I have a full mana pool heal here, and all of the items I was using for the setup, uh, including that other thing over there. Um, so yeah, you can tell I got into Batania when I showed you all that. Um, got into Blood Magic some. Uh, this isn't a tier six altar, but it is laid out to become a tier six altar at some point. Uh, I just put diamond blocks up here for uh, placeholders, uh, and I also have uh, basalt brick as placeholder for uh, blood runes. Um, you'll notice if you're looking at this, this is uh, this blood altar is specced so that it can have fluid transported into or out of it as quickly as possible. And the reason for that is a full bedrockium drum underneath. Um, I also did get into demon summoning a little bit because I needed to kill some air elementals. Well, just elementals in general for demon shards um, to progress after a certain point. I've got an alchemy ritual over here, an unbinding ritual there, and a ritual of binding there. Um, but that this this actually happened after I set up the Thomcraft area. Thomcraft was the first uh, expansion onto the current building. So I've got a basic setup. Oh my god. What was that? That sounded loud. What just happened? That didn't sound good. Uh Um The fuck was that? I thought my turbine might have exploded cuz it does say, it does know that rotors kept over speed for too long may fail catastrophically. So, I was very worried for a moment there. Uh, there might have something else might have exploded though. Oh, if you can hear that sound, there is an igneous extruder here making cobblestone, uh, which then goes into a pulverizer, makes sand, and as a byproduct gravel. Um, so I did that mostly for my sand supply, but I figured eh, I might as well keep my cobble supplies full too. Although, uh, I have plenty of cobble. Although, mainly, my main resource that I have way too fucking much of is just normal smooth stone. Like 1.3 million. It's got to the point where my quarry is now set up so that all of my smooth stone goes into here and makes singularities. I figured if I'm going to trash items, I might as well make them useful somehow, too. Um, I do believe Industrial Craft has a way to make those scrap boxes, but eh. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Industrial Craft. This guy, I'm trying to get a dimensional shard ore, but he's been here for so long, I don't know if he's going to eat that. I don't know if that works. Um, I need to move my wireless charger. Uh, but anyway, getting into RF dimensions, uh, here I have a power plant dimension, which is just a dimension that is eternally noon, basically, for solar panels. 
Um, that's not right. Oh, the Mob Essence one usually goes there. So I have a Dimension for Clay, Mob Essence, Moonstone, because none of it was spawning on the surface for some reason, and I needed it for Ars Magica. And as you can see, it's draining. I don't really need it for anything. Uh, which one is this one? Oh, Overworld number two. I basically made a second... Uh, I, I made it as close to the Overworld as possible because I needed some uh, biomes, overworld, normal overworld biomes that I couldn't find myself, so I made a second one, and it actually put me inside of a taint. The very the spawn point for this is inside a taint, which is awesome in my opinion. Pink slime. Don't ever make a pink slime dimension, ever. It may seem smart to bypass the slaughterhouse, but it ain't worth it. Uh, it worked, and I did bypass the slaughterhouse to get pink slime, and I have a spawn thing for it here somewhere. Uh, where's it at? I don't remember where I put it. Pigment, witch blaze, gas creeper, pink slime. There it is, pink slime. Uh, it wasn't worth it though. Uh, it's so fucking laggy because the ocean of pink slime is constantly turning into slimes. So in fact, I should probably trash that dimension. Um, and a soul sand dimension. That's how I got so much soul sand. Um, and also right here, there is a blood ocean biome. Uh, which is how I have... Okay. Which is how I have two bedrockium drums full of blood essence. At least I think it's two. No, this one's emptying out now. Which means I have to reset that pump at some point. But that's not a problem. It's a whole fucking dimension that's nothing but blood. I need to make another one with no features, though, because it has a bunch of uh, iron ore globes. And I have no need for iron ore at this point. Just to give you an idea... I have 10k iron ore right there and 2k bars. So, naturally, I used a shit ton of it for my beacons here. If I come over here, you'll notice over there above my mana bar that I have a bunch of buffs. Speed 2, strength 2, jump boost, resistance 2, and regen. Also, also I, I didn't say anything yet, but obviously I have draconic stuff. And I made two draconic staffs of power, one... One made specifically for mining, and another made specifically for combat. Because I don't like the idea that I could break blocks with my weapon. I didn't like that at all. Time to get more. That'll be done in a second. Um, pretty much all the time as well, I'm super fast because I have the Draconic stuff, the Sojour uh, Sash, and I also have Run Speed Bonus from Ars Magica on my boots. Um, Draconic Armor doesn't get along with, uh, Ars Magica stuff very much, or Blood, ma or the, not Blood Magic, the Sanguimancy Manual, because I, I was thinking I'd try that out, but Sanguimancy seems like a multiplayer thing, um... But if I was to try to open up the Oculus while I have this armor on, it's going to be just black. But if I take the armor off, it works. It's something to do with the GUI from what my digging has told me. Um, I don't know what that sound. I guess that's the... that's. Oh, I know what that is. That's my Aqueous Accumulator. Yeah, I'm going to have to move that at some point. There's a lot of things I still need to do. Uh, oh, you just heard one of the things I was talking about earlier. I made a little very minimal tree farm right here. I didn't even bother making a tesseract for the sludge. I just plopped down a bedrockium drum that was sitting in my immune system. Um, and I had these lying around. I have a recipe for these made, so I can make those pretty much as much as I want. Uh, I did put a bunch of stuff on the infusion altar that I haven't used at all yet to make it more stable. In fact, it even goes... What? Oh. Yeah, it comes down here and I've got a bunch of... I don't know how effective any of this is, but all I know is it has to be symmetrical. Heads and crystals count. Uh, the candles do too, but I don't... I can't make those at the moment. I need to get into the crucible stuff, and I didn't want to touch that at the moment. Um, 
if you've watched Nebris, you'll see this is very inspired by his Thomcraft room. Um, although, I want to get the Ethereal blocks from Sanguomancy. I don't know if I can get those. Um, but I'm going to try so that I can give them the Runic Glass texture. And I am using the glitched Runic Glass that I got from my Wither Spawner. Or Wither Grinder. But, eh. Whatever. <laughs> if it wasn't that, I'd just use normal glass turned into usual runic glass and that just seemed well i'd have to make a crafting queue on my mini system and just i'm being lazy basically um and i have basically infinite sand at this point it just takes a while to accrue so i'm not too worried about it um what else have i changed uh i did craft those dimen a lot of those dimensions you saw were made by my myself um, actually, um, I infused a dimlet workbench, 100%. What I have in here? Oh, yeah, my modular storage filled up. Um, so I took a bunch out and threw them in here, some of the less useful ones. Like all the stained glass and stained clay stuff. Wait, I saw another lapis ore. Huh. Well, I mean, it's not like I need lapis, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, what was something else I did? Uh, I think there was something else I did down here. Why is the dog still barking? It's like almost 1 a.m. I thought it was a lot later than that, actually, to be honest. It's only 1 a.m. I didn't realize it was that early, so. Um, where did I put it exactly? I believe I put it right below this reactor. Yeah, I made a laser drill. It's not very fast. In fact, it's painfully slow. But I figured it'll give me a source of some of the ores that I don't have much of. I'm going to have to see what that... Hang on a second. Alright, I'm back. Uh, dog had to go out and take a shit, basically, is the gist of that. Alright, um, did I do anything else? Um, I can't really think of anything else I might have, may or may not have done. Um, I made more spells. You can see up there. I do this. I made a zap spell. That cost way too much mana. Uh, restoration spell. That also cost way too much mana. Just uh, That's the spell I always had. And a cast light spell. That cast light spell I made purely just to activate this um, celestial prism. And I needed to make a similar spell just for as a normal fire spell for this one. Um, I set up some mana batteries. Because these things don't hold jack shit now. They hold very little essence. Moved all the Ars Magica stuff over here. Um, a lot of temporary setups have a permanent place now. Um, uh, all those experience ender tanks you saw, they lead into this... Uh, yeah, that. Um, I have an, my whole crafting setup here. I have a bunch of these things that, uh, there's various ways to repair items that use vanilla damage values, like these do. Um, Thomcraft has one, Batania I think has one, and I believe Ars Magica also has one, the Arcane Reconstructor or something like that, and it uses this Essentia, not Essentia, Essence, Essentia is Thomcraft, uh, it uses this Essence that I have storing in these mana batteries as fuel. So there's that. Um, is there anything else I'm forgetting? Um, I can't really think of anything, but I feel like I'm forgetting something. The fuck was this? Oh my god, I pretty much just shit my pants right there. This thing always scares me, but it was especially loud because I'm using my headphones right now. I have a weather controller set up here as well. That's actually surprisingly cheap to run, but as with Draconic Evolution's theme, it's overpowered for the cost. This thing I don't really use anymore. I never really used it much. I used it to spawn a few extra of certain mobs that I needed. Um, 
Like I've used it to spawn extra ore sheep to grab in safari nets to get more stuff or to get more different types of ore sheep basically. But that's that's about it. That's all I've used it for. Um, so I guess I'll just talk about some of my future plans then. Um, I'm going to have rooms like this all, all along the blood altar room. Um, and there's going to be another hallway here leading to a boss area. And the reason for that is that I've got a beacon here for strength too. And a beacon here for resistance too. And I figure, it, well, in boss fights, that would be pretty darn useful, don't you think? Um, so yeah, if you didn't already realize, this blood altar is standing where about where my old home was. My temporary one from when I first started the world. Uh, <laughs> that whole hill is torn down. Yeah. Did some heavy terraforming. Um, I'm not sure uh, on the design of my Thumbcraft room at the moment or the design that I'm going to use for any of these other buildings. Uh, I'm going to replace all this with grass, by the way, because I want it to look nice. I want it to look like I didn't do what I did. I don't know. Um, for this, I use this is a all the different types of wedge slopes basically used here to make this possible. If anyone's wondering how the hell I did that, it does bug me that it doesn't end correctly on this end. Like I want it to meet up and for it to go just straight down. I don't know how to do that though, or if it's even possible. Um, <coughs> Obviously, a lot of stuff is still a work in progress. I think my Thomcraft room is mostly done with extensions on the area as needed to be made. Um, I couldn't find any posts, and no one on the Crack Pack Reddit really posted any pictures of their all-inclusive uh, setups. So I figured I'd just make my own setups with room to expand, um, which wasn't my us uh, initial intent. I wanted to keep everything as close together as possible, so... Uh, the less chunks I have to load, the better, in my opinion. But I guess I just start making chunk loaders once I run out of room on that. Um, and I figure it's not a problem, really. Or, or I could just go in the config and increase the number of chunks I can load. If I, th I think that's an option. Um, and it doesn't really matter since I'm on single player and not a server. Um, but on a server, I would not be allowed to load this many chunks, I don't think. Um, but it's pretty important for my setup, actually. Uh, this thing finally filled back up. Um, my soul network's finally full again. It stores like 3 million or something dumb like that. Um, but what happened was, is I left my uh, alchemy thing running, because I'd already filled up my soul network once. Um, I left this running. I <laughs> didn't realize it. And uh, by the time I checked, my soul network was like less than a fourth full. It was... I mean, I have an Archmage Blood Orb, so it still would have been a while before it emptied out completely, but it was pretty empty. As far as... These guys keep spawning, these Light Mages. And I don't know what to do about them. I don't want them to keep spawning. Um, I still need a Sludge Boiler Room, but I have no idea where to put that, because there and there are going to be auto-processing. Although I might be able to fit all the auto-processing over here, in which case I could use this for Sludge Boiling. Um, but I still don't know what I'm going to use for sludge blowing. I don't know what I'm going to put here any either, because this reactor's no longer useful to me. Um, it's going to be replaced at some point. Because it generates less power and uses more Eulorium than this setup does here. Granted, this setup is also ten times more expensive, but, you know. Um... Also, um, a problem I ran into here was that this was chugging way too much fuel. It was chugging 1.2 millibuckets per tick, um, which was still a better power to fuel usage ratio than this one. But um, the solution to that was just the fuel rods. I'd forgotten that the fuel rods was an option with this uh, with the turbine. Um, yeah, so I probably should have used tesseracts here. But I just went with uh, Super Laminar Fluiducts, which if you don't know what those do, they basically have limitless, f um, almost limitless fluid transfer rate as long as they can stay full. So if they're not full, they're just going to be like any other pipe. But if you can have them full, which they always are here, they should transfer infinitely. But um, this 
Uh, and so this should theoretically be full, but it is, keep in mind, it is using half of its internal storage of steam uh, per tick. So the 2,000 millibuckets per tick, it's using that every tick. Um, I had my thing right there, but then it was just sucking up water, and I was, like, it was sucking up all of the water from my water ender tank so that it couldn't be used elsewhere. Um, so I st shut that down. <clears throat> um... So, let me get on plans for the future more. Uh, yeah, I'm basically going to have this whole room cordoned off. And what I plan to do is on the bottom of all of these, I'll have like an essentia or an arcane constructor or assembler. And on the top, I'll have a fluid um, assembler. They won't all need them, but I won't know which ones need them because obviously I'm just using my terminal up there to slot the patterns in. I'm not actually coming down here and slotting them in manually. So I figure it's best if they all have one. And also for anyone that's a skeptic, I have confirmed that uh, by actually watching it, that these interfaces will in fact use all six of the assemblers hooked up to them. Um, so I've heard people say that you can only hook up five assemblers to an interface because one of them, one side needs to be the wire. That's not true. As you can see, that's hooked up to the uh, assembler. And the assemblers won't use a channel either. Just the interfaces. Um, 32 out of 32. 32 out of 32. And uh, the assemblers will transmit data just like any cable would. Um, but only up to 8 channels. Same as the interfaces. So you can only have them in clusters of 8 like I have here. If you want it to be as compact as possible. So, uh, yeah, these assemblers are only touching diagonally, none of them like that. But that's what I plan to do here so that I can use patterns for other stuff too. Although then I do need Viz and a wand, but I plan to make a super hungry node at some point. Like I plan to like go way out over here and energize a hungry node after I've made it just fucking a huge, enormous, basically. And I plan to try that multiple times until I get a super hungry node that I can use as a viz relay or whatever. That's my plan anyway. I There's no guarantee that any of this stuff will ever happen. Just due to the fact that I may lose interest. But if I still have the world and my interest for modded Minecraft comes back, then, <clears throat> then I'll pick up where I left off if I remember everything. Uh, I plan to fill all this in so it all looks nice and smooth. I've been trying to light up my base more, as you can see, because I didn't like all these dark corridors and everything, which became a problem once I made the walls. So it's not as dark as it used to be. I also learned that these wedges let light in, so there's a thing. I need to find out something to put in these um, hallways, but I have no idea what to decorate them with. Um, with my blood altar, I ended up going with... Uh, what are these? Marble pillar blocks, for the most part, for the wedges. Um, for these filler blocks, basically, I guess I'll call them. I went with normal basalt. Placeholders are basalt bricks, but these are going to be, I think, permanent. I kind of like the look of it. But what I really like the look of is these uh, marble pillar blocks on wedges, because they're forced to be a one tall one, and if the marble court pillar, see... It's the same texture, but on a wedge like that, it looks really good. Um, yeah. These are full beacons, by the way. I think I already mentioned that. I think at some point I'll make a small walkway right here to get underneath, since I think uh, this is going to be my temporary summoning area. Um, there's one other thing I have not shown yet. And it's way over here because it had to be in the river biome. But I basically just made an area to fight the water uh, thing. I had this with uh, stacks of wood planks just fighting the water guardian multiple times and an ender tank there to get buckets, basically. And I will say, if you want a challenge, that draconic, draconic evolution won't really help you overcome a whole lot. The armor will, but the weapons not so much. Uh... Ars Magica bosses, because they you do like one percent damage to them or something like that. Not one percent; it's probably more like ten percent. But you get the point. Um, like ten percent damage to them if you're not using spells from Ars Magica. So that's a thing. Um, uh, granted, it's the first boss of that, so 
Um, I still had no problem with it, just using my Staff of Power. But that was the reason for me creating that Zap spell you saw, although it wasn't as effective as I had hoped because its mana cost is obviously too high for my current level. But yeah. Um, I'm really happy with how it's turning out. Like, this is turning out to be one of my best builds ever, which may not say much, but... For my other builds, I mean. Um, but if you've watched my channel for any long time, I'm not usually super creative. Um, but Nebris gave me a little bit of uh, inspiration, um, and I kind of threw my own spin on it in some spots. Um, for example, I prefer the whole, like, wiring, storage, uh, and power gen, processing, all that stuff. I prefer that to be underneath my base, like underground, like I have it here. Although I kind of have, I may end up making tunnels for wiring, because uh, I got to the point where I set this up. This is my uh, chests for my wither grinder, as you can see. I may end up setting up hallways down here. Similar to Nebris, if you watch him. Um, I mention him a lot. It may seem like I'm a fanboy, but I'm really not. I just like some of his builds, and they give me some inspiration for my own. And In some cases, I am blatantly copying or trying to his designs. Um, and I will not try to take credit for them. They are his designs. Uh, even some of these ones that I put my own spin on, I don't really take full credit for. I'm just happy that I might was able to build such a thing myself just from having watched one of his videos because um, all of the things the videos that like here's how you build in Minecraft are always saying use a uh, tons of different materials but never manages to build really cool stuff out of pretty much just two different materials but yeah anyway um, I hope you guys enjoyed hopefully this didn't run too long and I have to cut it up into two parts again I have a feeling I will. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, click that like button. Maybe hit subscribe. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get back into video making, but uh, my last two videos that I posted, these update videos, I actually gained qu uh, several subscribers from them. Uh, I think at least two, maybe three or four even. Um, so I may get back into it, um, and just keep this format, basically, just doing update videos, um, I might do LPs again someday, if there's ever a desire for it, but I'm just not as into it as I used to be, um, I'm more so trying to move forward in my life, I started college, um, I'm going for a computer support degree. Um, hope to learn some coding at some point too, although I think there might be a one or two coding classes in my degree plan. Um, but I'm just rambling on at this point. Um, oh wait, here's one thing I forgot. <laughs> so, I made this thing, and I would have used a Kokoku, but that goes through various armors. Um, I used this to get armor infusion for Ars Magica, basically. It's basically just an autonomous activator designed to punch me in the face many times with two blocks here, so I can just AFK. And it kind of goes against the spirit of it, but eh. And uh, that was done for this set of armor right here, which I no longer use. But if I look at it, uh, you can see everything but the... I hope that's not scaring you guys as bad as it is me. Holy shit, I need to just end this episode. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.